And I know we're rolling now, right? <laughs> Um, people ask me, do I ever listen to classical music? The answer in the general sense is no. But when I do want to listen to orchestral or strings and horns and woodwind and that kind of thing, I tend to reach for Michael Nyman, Philip Glass, and especially this LP from David Byrne from 1991, The Forest. Now this is a sort of neoclassical avant-garde album. I I know it inside out, I've, I've sort of almost taught myself to like it. And so when I want to listen to orchestral and strings, I come to this album quite a lot. And it's a vinyl LP, we're going to be talking about vinyl today, a turntable. And that turntable comes from Project. This is the T1 Phono SB. So if we lift up the smoke glass lid, we see it's a belt drive, there is a very thin very light plinth. On the right hand side we have a, I think it's an almost a nine inch tone arm. It's aluminium. There's no anti-skate on it, but there is a cartridge pre-mounted, factory fitted. It's the Autophon OM5E. Did I say that the lid was smoked glass? I meant, of course, that it's smoked plastic. When setting up a turntable for the first time, it's really, really, really important to get it level. You can use those little small spirit levels, but personally I don't find them as effective as using a bearing like this and making sure that it doesn't roll around on the glass platter and then evening out the feet accordingly. So even though the instructions say that the, the tracking force of the autofun cartridge is set at the factory, I wanted to double check it. Um, just to make sure that the counterweight was in the right position and it was absolutely bang on 1.75 grams spot on not 1.76 or 1.74 and 1.75 so you can actually plug and play with this turntable you, you don't even have to do anything take it out of the box put it together and then connect it to your amplifier now the phono in the in the model name essentially means that there is a built-in phono stage which there is it's defeatable I've only listened to this turntable with the inbuilt phono stage because I think that's what most people would do. They want to get it up and running with vinyl. They don't want to have to worry about an external phono stage, not yet. And they don't want to have to worry about upgrading the cartridge, not yet. However, there are two features that are much less common at this 350 euro price point. The first of them is a glass platter. Normally we see plastic, or sometimes we see metal. And the other one is actually a big one. It's actually one of my pet peeves about a lot of entry-level turntables is that you have to lift the, the platter off, move the belt so you can change the speed of the rotation from 33 to 45. This project turntable has a speed box built in, that's the SB in the model name, that means there are switches on the front panel where we can just change the speed with just the push of a button, which I think is great. I think that's what entry-level turntables look for and I think when they find out they have to move you know, move the, the belt by lifting off the platter. This is like, no, this is, I think that's a deal breaker for many people, possibly.
There are a couple of usability niggles that I've experienced with this. The power on off switch on the side sometimes causes a thump in the loudspeakers. Nothing's going to damage them, but it's just still an on off thump. Um, the tone arm cradle, so where the tone arm sits uh, when, the, when it's not on the record, feels a bit flimsy. And also because the plinth is so light that sometimes when you lift the lid, the, the whole turntable moves around. But I guess at this kind of price point for a belt drive, low mass turntable, I don't think we can comp complain about that too much. So how does this turntable sound with its inbuilt phono stage? So normally what I would do is I would compare it to something else, but I don't have any, any other turntable at this price point. So what I thought I would do is I would compare it to the same money or similar money spent on a network streaming DAC. In this case, the Blue Sound Node 2i. Now that's the streamer, that's not the power node, the streamer, the Blue Sound Node 2i. And also, instead of just giving you my thoughts, what, I, what I've done is I've digitized the turntable's output using a PS Audio New Wave Phono Converter because it has a line level input. So basically I managed to digitize four one minute samples of Radiohead, of the David Byrne, of First Aid Kit and of Moderat, put them in a file, put it online. And I did the same for the Blue Sound Node 2 Eyes analog outputs. I digitized those as well, the same four one minute segments of those files. And I put them online for people that follow me on YouTube to compare just for 48 hours. And what's really interesting from the, the poll that ensued, I'll put a link to that down below. Basically people could vote on their preference for sound file A or sound file B, or if they felt there was no clear winner, that was option C. Now most people actually went for C, they felt there was no clear winner. But of those that did have a preference, they went for file A which was the Blue Sound Node 2i. Um, file B got about 25% of votes. So I can definitely sympathize with the people that felt there was not a clear winner in this case. Because whilst the Blue Sound Node 2i, its, its base extension was much better and much cleaner, it didn't have that nice or delicate finesse top end that the project turntable gives us with its phono stage. Don't forget we're using the inbuilt phono stage here. Um, I felt that the blue sound had more attack and dynamic punch. The turntable was a bit more reluctant in that regard. And I wish the mid-range popped a bit more. And I think listening through speakers, I've got this set up right now with the blue sound power node too high, so the amplifier, and with some Q Acoustics 3030i speakers. Listening to that whole system, I wish the turntable gave us more um, soundstage depth than it actually does. But like many of you who voted in that poll, I couldn't really say that one was definitively better than the other. So at this particular price point, actually I was expecting the streamer to sound better, but it, it really doesn't. The, the turntable gives us something that the network streaming DAC cannot. And maybe that's a more organic feel to music, something that just feels a bit, a bit kinder, a bit more gentle, a bit more easier to listen to, a bit more musical for some people. That's what they might say. But I don't say that, do I? <laughs> all plain sailing with the turntable though because I think this project gets a little bit muddled when the music gets very complicated and it doesn't reject the surface noise on the record as much as it does more expensive turntables I mean I've got a very very high-end project turntable here which I love the extension 10 and that plays records much more silently with the autophon cadenza black cartridge on there they're miles apart in price. This thing's like 7,000, this thing's 350. But one of, I think one of the sacrifices you have to make when you've got a, um, a more affordable turntable, a cheaper turntable, is you're gonna be exposed to more surface noise in your records. That's a factor for many people, I think. So this isn't just a project thing or a regular thing or a U-turn thing or whatever affordable turntable manufacturer thing. The cartridge that they install to get people up and running 
in, in trying to hit a price point, a very low price point, they can't put a luxury cartridge on the turntable. So the cartridge we get here, the OM5E, is pretty basic. It does an okay job, it's not better than streaming, but it's not worse than streaming. It's sort of better in some areas with delicacy and finesse, but not as good with, say, bass extension and dynamic punch. So you have to choose which qualities you prefer if you're trying to choose between streaming and vinyl at this level. If I were to own this turntable, I would change the cartridge out straight away. And I would put on something like um, a Nagaoka MP110. I might even put on an Audifon 2M Blue, maybe. I think that would give us a lot more in terms of the qualities that vinyl people speak about and of that finesse and that delicacy and that sort of palpability. But that's pure conjecture at this stage because we have to deal with this turntable as it is with the Autophon OM5E. <laughs> I don't think that all of us shopping for turntables are doing so because of the sound. Many of us are into vinyl, as it's been said many times before. Many of us are into vinyl because of the playback ritual, the tangibility, the cover art, and things like that. But also, I think, more important than that, we like buying stuff. We like having stuff in our house. I mean, I like having my records here because they tell other people who come to visit who I am. They speak of my identity and they also remind me of my identity. So some of us define ourselves by our vinyl collections, our love of music. I mean, some of us tend to take it a little bit far and get into extremist talk about you can't beat the sound of vinyl, which as we know in this particular case is not true. This turntable does not outstrip a comparably priced streaming DAC and neither should we expect it to but that doesn't take us away from all of the other qualities that vinyl playback offers us. So this is a pretty damn solid choice. If you want to get into turntables and vinyl playback, Project T1 Phono SB. It's good stuff. So if you like this video, please smash the like button down below. Subscribe to this channel if you want to see more videos from me about final playback and other hi-fi things. And as always, thank you so much for watching. <laughs>